street parties right across the south, having fun on this Diamond Jubilee weekend. From belly dancing to boats on the Thames, how the south is enjoying a long bank holiday. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Swan Edge Diamond Jubilee! Let the party commence! Hello and welcome to a special live edition of South Today from Swanage. We have had one of the biggest street parties here. 600 people on 100 trestle tables and they've been lined up down the high street behind these people here. What they try to do is create the same as they did for Queen Victoria and her Diamond Jubilee. Now the tickets sold out when they went on sale. But as you can see, what we've tried to do is recreate our own little Diamond Jubilee street party here in the square, where the party is still going on in the town of Swanage. We have had a fabulous day, and we're going to give you a glimpse of how it all started right at the beginning of the day, at the very early hours, here in Swanage. It's a big day for the town, and it all started here early this morning. There's a very strong community feeling at Swanage, and it's really working well. Everyone's working together. They're all looking hungry, so I decided I ought to lend a hand with the sandwiches. Oh! Cheers! Cheers! Oh, yeah! Happy Diamond Jubilee! Is that what you say? <laughs> We're making 600 boxes up with the sandwiches and the cakes and jellies. 600? Oh, you're taking the crown off first. It's sort of... <laughs> so, do you want to do a gun? A gun, okay. okay. You won't right. need gloves. <laughs> okay. You're the tape. Oh, everyone's welcome. There's spaces up at Albert Gardens, up at the end. People can bring their own picnic. How, how big a dot do you just, want? Just like that, just to put them... Okay. Oh, <laughs> I want to do an S. See how many spots there are. S yes for Sally. Good, Good luck, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Only 550 to go. Oh, yes. <laughs> Swanage Diamond Jubilee. Let the party commence. Four picnics. Have a lovely afternoon. Look, I've got one specially made. <laughs> oh, your majesty. How lovely to see you. How's the celebrations going? Very well indeed. Everything's so organised. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm looking forward to the next one. <laughs> You're from Canada. What, what do you think of the British Jubilee Street Party? It is great. Just absolutely fantastic. Ever experienced anything like it before? Uh, not in Canada. <laughs> Jubilee, I have to say, was wonderful. But this does take the biscuit. It's really, well, it's wonderful, isn't it? Everybody coming together and 600 people. It's just amazing, isn't it? And you know, my head's getting really hot. <laughs> what do you think of this party? It's awesome! amazing day I can't tell you and look, I've even been given the penny isn't that good for all the work that I did now I've just got to say that of all the 11 ladies who helped actually create all those sandwiches and let's make there were 600 of them quite a lot of work from early this morning we've got the lovely Mari and your husband Mark it's a very special day for Mari and Mark because it is your wedding anniversary yep. Sorry, 19th. 19th, congratulations how lovely to be spending it and celebrating like this in the Diamond wonderful. Jubilee absolutely wonderful yeah. good day very good day. It's been brilliant in Swanage. Good. Excellent. It has. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely fabulous. Sue, you were the person, you were the boss of all the ladies. How did it go from your point it of view? It was absolutely fantastic. They all worked really hard and we didn't fall out at all. It was really good. Really? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I excellent. think that little bit of drink early in the day helped go well. It did. A little pin. Yeah. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> but you had a good time. We had a lovely time, thank you. Good. It was really, really good. 
Mary, how is my cake decorating? Fantastic. Yes, I'll give you a job any day. Oh, yeah. really? You're just being kind, really. <laughs> Do you know, what is it about the community spirit in Swanage that brought it all together? Oh, it's, it's just fantastic. Everybody gets together, all the organisations, and they just work together, and it's been fantastic. The atmosphere's been great. Would you do it again, Sue? Yes, of course we will. We will oh, you again. said that with gritted teeth, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for letting me join in, and I'm glad you had a good day, because it is down to people like you that these Jubilee street parties take place, because it's been fabulous right across the South. I mean, they reckon that something like 1,500 street parties took place across the South of England, certainly in the BBC South region. As well as that, we've had car rallies, we've had carnivals, we've had, well, whatever you name, we've had it. Caroline Richardson's going to have a look around the region at what a great day and a great weekend you're having. Hip, hip! Hooray! I want it louder than that. Hip, hip, hip! That's how it started in Rooksbury Road in Andover. Three cheers for Her Majesty and another for dry weather. They went for a 1950s theme, right down to the homemade bunting. We looked about buying it online, but we thought it'd actually be nice to, to do our own. So uh, one of the team organised a bunting party. Um, so we all gathered sheets and cloths together, dyed it the appropriate colours, cut them into shapes, uh, bought the bunting tape, and we had a bunting party one, one weekend. We are enjoying it immensely and we're celebrating the way we should do. I'll eat everything except for the healthy stuff. <laughs> I think that's what being British is all about, is we all come together at times like this and really enjoy ourselves. As someone who has very fond memories of a Silver Jubilee Street Party in 1977, I can remember there being a lot of fizzy drink, a lot of cake and a lot of sausage rolls, and I'm very pleased to report that nothing has changed. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I don't remember prizes for best dressed wheelie bins in 1977, but they're all the rage in Longstock Close in Andover. The sun was just peeping out, which was good news for those at the end of an enviably long trestle table. In Wendover in Buckinghamshire, they were dancing in the street, certainly one of the bigger Jubilee parties attracting some local celebrities. Yeah, very excited to be here. Just arrived. Um, I think they're expecting about 5,000 people today, so it's going to be a fantastic day for Wendover. I'm uh, very pleased to be here. And then a parade to end all parades. That lot are going to need a lot of cake. Maybe they should head down to Mount Grace Drive in Poole for possibly the best cakes in the south of England, almost too good to eat. And then on to Tremlow Avenue for a spot of giant chess. Maybe not the best idea on a very full stomach. Caroline Richardson, BBC South Today. I told you everybody in all the communities right across the south were having a great deal of fun this bank holiday weekend, celebrating the Diamond Jubilee and just actually generally having parties as well. Now in amongst uh, all the eating and drinking that's been done in the centre of Swanage at the tea party, we've also had the Bahara belly dancers who were amazing earlier on. And uh, Susan, you're in charge of them. How, how cool is that to be part of this? It's just fantastic. It's been a brilliant day and everybody's made such a good effort. It's been great fun. And how long have you been doing belly dancing? Um, about five or six years. It's my fourth year teaching in Swanage. And, do, and, and any age can do this? Any ability? Yes, my oldest lady has been 84. 84? 84. Oh, yes. that's 84. Hope, hope for me yet. <laughs> Is it, is it very difficult to do? No, it's very easy and it's great fun. All my ladies have brilliant fun and that's why they come. All right, let me just talk to Helen here. Excuse me a minute, Susan. Helen, you've been, how long have you been doing this? Uh, three, just over three years. Three years? Yes. And what attracted you to doing belly dancing? I've got the belly and, <laughs> and it was, it's just such good fun for all ladies. Uh, few of us are over 60 and it's great. And how did it go down? Because you did it in front of everybody. I mean, you are bearing all. It's very brave. We got an ovation. We repeated some of it. That's brilliant. <laughs> all right, just to finish off, can we, um, can we have a little bit of belly dancing? What's the move? What's the move? You can do a hip circle. Go on then, girls. Do a hip circle. Thank you so much. I think work needed is really the answer to that. Well, I did slightly better than all of you here, didn't I? Thank you so much, Susan. It was just, thank you, ladies. Lovely. Now, of course, if you were watching television yesterday, or if you were lucky enough to go up to London, you'll know that there we had the fabulous Royal Pageant on the Thames, a thousand vessels taking part, and our own Jeff Holt, quadriplegic sailor, who was the first 
to actually uh, cross the Atlantic. That was in January 2010. Well, the lucky Ben Moore went on board and joined Jeff as he uh, paraded in front of the Queen yesterday. As the ominous dawn clouds gather over Canary Wharf, one small boat from the south is setting off very early for her date with the Queen. I was lucky to be one of the chosen few that are a part of this and being able to bring them a family to share it with friends as well. It's going to be a great day. Before other boats have stirred, Wet Wheels has to cover the entire pageant route in reverse to Chiswick to pick up Jeff's special guests. Welcome on board. Thank you very much. You're... Today, disabled youngsters have a front row seat to the biggest Thames pageant in more than two centuries. For someone like Craig to feel like a part, a part of this, it allows them to be aware of exactly what's going on today. He's already waving at people now. <laughs> Wet Wheels is part of the motorboat class in the flotilla and has to stay in strict formation the whole seven miles of the route. We're just on our way into London now, about five miles to go, but as you can see there are four rows of boats and we're in the first one, which means we'll go directly past the Queen. As we come into London, the rain starts, but a mere ten hours after setting off, it's our turn to file past the Royal Barge. Brilliant. We were cold, wet, got drain rats, but we were absolutely brilliant time. Really enjoyed it. I don't know if she recognised us, but she certainly gave us a nice big wave. It's fantastic. It's pouring with rain. It's miserable and cold, but... We're British and we're having a lovely time, and uh, this is what it's all about. Ben Moore, BBC South Today, on the River Thames. <laughs> what a day they had on the Thames. It was truly tremendous, wasn't it? Great to watch on television as well, on the BBC. All right, we've got loads of people along here. Just want to get a quick wave. Amazing. Party's carrying on here. Plenty more from Swanage in a few moments. But first, let's get the rest of the day's news. Alan Sinclair is in the studio. Sally, thank you. Now let's cross back to Sally Taylor and rejoin the Jubilee celebrations in Swanage. Sally. Alan, thank you very much for that. Yes, we're here in Swanage Live where they've had the most extraordinary street party, 600 people. Before we go on to uh, talk about the 60 years that the Queen has been on the throne, it is worth mentioning just at this point, of course, as you heard on the national news, the Duke of Edinburgh has been taken to hospital with a bladder infection and he is under observation at the moment. Any changes in that, of course, the BBC News will bring it to you, so do watch out this evening. Well, as I said, the Queen has been on the throne here for 60 years and, my goodness, has a time changed in that 60 years. A man has walked on the moon. Our lives have changed with the invention of these. Life has become a lot faster, I think it's fair to say. Well, Laura Trant has been looking back now on the decade of the 50s. Imagine a world with fewer cars on the road, where foreign travel is rare, sweets are rationed, and if you want new clothes, you have to make them yourself. This is Wimborne Model Town, frozen in time to 60 years ago. By the 1950s, people, there was still rationing, you know, which had been in place since the Second World War. And it wasn't until 1954 that meat, which was the last thing to come off ration, came off ration. So I think people on the whole would have, or many more people would have had what we call a full English now. They would have had a fried breakfast. Then for lunch, they tended to be the main meal of the day. A lot of men, if they could, would come home for lunch. Um, you know, they wouldn't sort of have sandwiches at their desk as we're used to now. And they'd have probably had, a, you know, meat and two veg. It might have been mince, it might have been liver and bacon, it might have been a steak and kidney pudding, potatoes, cabbage, very well cooked cabbage. And of course also in the 50s there was increasing amount of processed foods, things like Angel Delight and you know mock whipped creams and trifles and that sort of thing. So there was a real style through the 50s, but was that sort of due to practicality as well? Well, yes. I mean, the thing was, you'd had the war. Rationing on clothes didn't finish till March 1949. If you went out, you wore hat, gloves, handbag, shoes, matching. 
Yeah. And it was so feminine and ladylike, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Oh, yes. And you had the waspy belt, the elasticated belt, which would hold you in, give you a nice tight waist. <laughs> You know, there was a move, if you like, from austerity at the very beginning of the 50s, Festival of Britain, to, I suppose you might say, affluence, because by the, near the end of the 50s, the Prime Minister, Harold Macmillan, was able to tell people, you know, many of you have never had it so good, and that was true. Extraordinary, isn't it, how times have changed? Well, one thing this year, of course, will be remembered for is how we have celebrated the Diamond Jubilee with art, whether it's paintings, whether it's theatre, and even whether it's poetry. And down here in Swanage, we have Simon Wells, who's a very well-known local poet, who is going to read a few verses from your poem, which is to the Queen. The world has changed an awful lot since Liz become the Queen. Tis probably the most it's changed the world has ever seen. There's climate change, disease and war, and lots of doom and gloom. And many more of folk than Elvis have got up and left the room. But in a world of constant change, we need some stable forces. We need a shiny golden carriage that's pulled by smart white horses. From the window, just visible, we can see a waving white gloved hand. Waving to us majestically in time to a marching band. For the guard may have changed so many times as we peer through palace gates. Prime ministers may come and go like a change of interest rates. But one thing is as reliable as a British cup of tea. As Queen Elizabeth, so ma'am, we wish you happy Diamond Jubilee. Well done! <laughs> Simon Wells, the local poet here. What a lovely piece of poetry that is. Well, as well as a street party here, you have been sending us your pictures. So let's have a quick roundup of some of the fabulous pictures you've sent of your great weekend. Thank you so much for sending in those pictures. They really do look glorious. You're obviously having a fabulous time. It's not over yet because tonight, of course, we've got the lighting of the beacons. Something like 200 from down here in Swanage, up to Oxfordshire, across to Brighton, right across the South Today region. Now, in Petersfield, they've got a very, very special one because they've got one on a raft. It's in the middle of the lake. It's going to be lit just after 10 o'clock. And the nice thing about this one is there's a crown in the middle and it's designed to glow once the beacon, of course, goes out. So that should be good. Steve Humphrey is going to be down here in Swanage. They've got a beacon just above the town here. So make sure you join him after all the festivities in our late news. We'll really be around about sort of 10.45ish, 11 o'clock tonight. So he'll be here live this evening. OK, the weather has been spectacular, hasn't it? Yeah! And the lovely, the lovely Raham is dressed for the occasion. She's up there above us. Make sure it stays. <laughs> Well, I'm dressed for the occasion here, as you can see in the Union flag, and it has been sunny in Swanage. But what about tomorrow? Is the weather going to hold up? Well, let's find out in just a bit. So we are looking at a rather cold and wet day tomorrow. There will be rain, and for many parts, it will be there by midday, although we will have a dry, bright start for the far north and the east of our region. So as we have a look at the graphics for tonight, well, it's going to stay dry and fine with some late evening sunshine, but then that cloud is building up from the south and the west and it will stay largely dry, but chilly with that northerly breeze dying down, but still quite breezy. And temperatures in single figures as we head into tomorrow morning, so around 9 Celsius for the far north. Along the south coast, a little bit milder, but temperatures in double figures. So tomorrow morning, a cloudy start, and that rain is going to be towards the south and the west fairly early on. So for Dorset, I think it will set in fairly rapidly through tomorrow morning. But for other parts, it will be rather erratic in its spread further north and east. So by midday, probably pushing into all parts, and it is going to be a chilly sort of day with that cloud building up and that rain becoming persistent as we head into the afternoon, particularly for the south coast, some heavy outbreaks of rain and gusty as well, 30 to 35 miles an hour. And generally speaking, temperatures will be well below average once again. So a high at best of 13 Celsius in Southampton. That brightness isn't there really. So rather unpleasant throughout tomorrow. And that rain, very slow in its clearance through the evening and overnight. It does fade away only to be replaced by a rash of showers by Wednesday morning. So temperatures around 10 or 11 Celsius as we head into Wednesday. And those showers are going to be heavy and thundery. So Wednesday, perhaps a bit of brightness by the afternoon and temperatures bumping up to 17 Celsius for the lucky few. But there will be quite a few showers. And then Thursday is looking very wet, 
very windy, that rain slow to clear on Friday morning. That's your weather. Back to you, Sally. She loves it up there, doesn't she? She certainly, look at her and all the, you know, the union flag as well. Now, Paul Miller's got a special programme on BBC Local Radio across the south tonight about the beacon lighting. That's at nine o'clock. But that's about it from us. But we're going to leave you with uh, how times have changed and look back at the Queen's visits across the south here over the last six decades. From Swanage, it's goodbye and thank you very much. Thanks for watching.